IBM Think 2021. Daniel, it looked like it was all about hybrid cloud and AI. Yeah, it was a, another big event circling the wagons, buddy. And, and you mentioned this, right? I think there was somewhere along the lines of five to six concurrent events in one week last week. This week wasn't quite that bad, but IBM Think was has been on the radar. And I was really eager to hear what Arvind uh, Krishna, CEO, had to say coming out of the keynote. And you were absolutely right. I mean, look, the company had several announcements, um, you know, new SQL announcements. It had some AI ML updates. It had some big ecosystem updates. But I really was trying to look at it more holistically and put put it all together. And, and what I basically came to is the company is working really hard to take its capabilities and bring data and AI closer together and be the enterprise hybrid cloud company. Now, having said that, there is no shortage of challengers in this market space. The company is going to be you know, facing fierce competition. Uh, AWS and Azure, Google always are going to be a serious set of players. But here's the thing. This is less about announcements, more about the vision that the company brought together. The company uh, just a few weeks ago had Red Hat Summit. And uh, for many of you that don't know that, IBM owns Red Hat, paid $34 billion for it. And this was the basic technology building block that allowed the company to connect everything it's done as a public cloud and a prem company and bring it all together. And what I really heard was this is going to be the path forward. Now, many of you know, they have the managed IT services company, Kindrel is what they're calling it now, that will be spun off in the next quarter. IBM's growth has been somewhat stunted in terms of quarter over quarter, year on year. And as a cloud company, growing in the single digit or small single digit loss percentages isn't going to be sufficient. So when I was listening to Arvind, I was kind of listening to what the themes are. And there was a couple themes that basically caught my mind. Uh, one, they're going to be an ecosystem company. There will be no boundaries within IBM in terms of oh, how the cloud provides accessibility. For instance, building cloud packs, which you may have heard about, IBM builds these cloud packs. Some of their first cloud pack data services aren't being built for IBM's cloud. They're actually being built for AWS. There's a for instance. The company recognizes that to be hybrid, it has to be open. It has to understand that companies are going to be working on various different clouds. The company is fully recognized multi-cloud is going to be a critical path forward. That's one thing. Um, Watson, automation, AI, and data, making processes more streamlined. That's another big play. The company is going to use all of the tools to be able to, you know, what I would say is it was one of the most prolific early AI players, and then it kind of got quiet. Watson got a little bit quiet. Understanding the path forward with Watson got a little bit quiet. The company showed some, uh, some strong direction there through what it presented this week. And then the third thing was partnerships, Pat. So Arvind spent a lot of time on partnerships in his keynote. Um, a couple of the more notable ones to me, um, while CVS was kind of the one that everyone was really interested in because the, the conversation was about COVID and technology to enable the deployment of the vaccine, that's, that's a human interest story. But the other two was the Siemens conversation with uh, Siemens Digital's CEO, Tony Hemmelgarn. And then the other one was with Brett Taylor from Salesforce. And the focus, Pat, on those two really caught my attention because one, most people would never think of IBM and Salesforce working closely together. But the bottom line is the two companies work very closely together through the global services um, business. And it is something that I, IBM is making itself known that, hey, we can do this. We can do Salesforce. We can do SAP. Um, we can do Splunk. There's lots of services, no no boundaries. And then the last thing, and before I leave you, because there's plenty of other topics. I don't know what you heard, but um, the IoT, um, the partnership with Samsung and IBM, or Samsung Siemens and IBM, is a great example of that true IT OT convergence. And in Arvind's presentation, he he really emphasized the fact that the company is building the cloud to be able to scale not just what's going on in the data center and with traditional IT, but really at the edge with things like manufacturing and OT, which has been something we've talked about for years, but still has a really long way to go. Daniel, that was a great take uh, at the high level stuff. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm going to dive a little bit into some of the announcements. So 
First off, the company had some announcements before IBM Think. So, for instance, uh, two nanometer nano sheet uh, test chip, uh, the first on the planet, uh, which really led to you know to me uh, looking at uh, IBM as a tech company and and a premier tech company. I think that's what some people miss. So, first off, IBM uh, introduced Cloud Pack uh, Auto SQL integration. Uh, that essentially uh, is is what they're showing up with a a data lake. Uh, they're claiming uh, getting AI to get answers to queries eight times faster. Uh, in the theme of AI and and hybrid cloud, there was also Watson Orchestrate, which it's funny. I think I might be the only person who looked at this as a a low code tool uh, to pull uh, together uh, workflows. Uh, essentially. Um, uh, using AI to pull together uh, pull together information from all the IBM applications, but also from Slack, Salesforce, SAP, and and Workday. Uh, every cloud company, every solutions company who's serious has to have something uh, like uh, like this. Uh, there was also uh, an, uh, an announcement called Maximo Mobile, and this is a mobile asset management uh, uh, solution. Uh, and essentially what they've done is they took took uh, that application and made it mobile. Uh, uh, picture a technician around like gas or electrical transmission lines, offshore wind turbines, scaffolding, all the dangerous stuff. Uh, and I thought that was uh, pretty cool. Uh, there was also uh, Project Code Net. And man, I love this. I did a, um, I did a webinar on this. Essentially, uh, think of AI being able to um, go in and inspect an application code, so source code, uh, and look at what's junk, what's old, and you need a tool like this to turn an application into, into let's say, a modern application. Let's say it's 20 years old. Uh, what code isn't being used and been cut off? You don't have to touch uh, that code. So we're kind of going from science fiction to reality with, uh, with CodeNet. And then finally, in quantum computing, IBM is a leader in quantum computing. Uh, there's only a handful of companies up there that, that are, are, are leaders, and IBM is one of them. IBM uh, brought out what's called a Kiskit runtime software, uh, which is essentially their development environment, uh, and they're claiming a 120x increase in quantum circuit processing speed uh, and works with IBM's hybrid cloud solutions. Whew. So, uh, getting back to Daniel, kind of what you talked about, the strategic framework, uh, it was all about hybrid cloud and it's, it's all about uh, a AI. I, for one, am looking forward to, you know, I love hardware, I love software, and I love the cloud. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some accelerated AI hardware from, uh, from uh, IBM. Uh, that, that is kind of the next step. I know they've got a couple designs. Uh, that they've talked about, but you know they're a full full scale uh, uh, house, and uh, I want to see uh, I want to see more of that. I love the cloud, and I love the software. I want to see the hardware too. Well, I know I knew you always uh, you always want to you know talk about uh, what's that those those little uh, those little <laughs> nanometers, Pat, and, and IBM's down to two. I'm just curious, right. are we going to go to like a negative nanometer? I mean, what's the scale at the end of this thing now that we're getting so close to zero? Uh, so, it's going to be, it's going to be yeah, a fun race. I'll give you an answer. I mean, we, we've, we've, I think we've proven uh, we can get to a half, uh, but there's also photonics that uh, we're looking at. So instead of copper uh, being uh, the connector, uh, actually light being uh, the connector. So stay tuned. I knew, you'd, I knew you'd have an answer for that. <laughs> it's ridiculous.